Hello Makers and welcome back to Spectiva Studios. It's good to have you here. Now today I want to share with you a relatively short lesson but something that's come into my needs as an artist more than once. Now oftentimes when I create artwork I like to work with a grid. For example, art like this? Yeah, a lot of grid work. And of course in order to make this happen I first need to build the grid. I need to have a piece of paper and I need to lay it out in a way where I know where to put the artwork and then later on I erase the lines. And I wanted to share with you my methodology which I've learned over time and just a much faster way to get to the results that you want. Now to start with I'm working with a, a piece of paper here. It's a kind of an odd shape in the sense it's uh, like 10, uh, 11 by 10 and uh, an eighth. Uh, and it, the reason I'm have the paper the size is it fits into a frame that somebody gifted me and I want to reuse that frame. But as I'm thinking about this I want to be able to create a new project, something we'll work on next week, and I want to be able to grid and say across the bottom here let's say we're going to have a one inch squares. So I'm going to have one inch square, one inch, one inch, one inch, I'm going to do about six of them up and down, total of 36, that's the plan anyway. And how do I make sure that I do this in a way that they're going to come in evenly, right? I want to make sure that they're the same distance from my margins and top and bottom and that can make things a little bit more challenging. And there have been times in the past where I've come in here and I've said, all right, let's try to figure this out. And the next thing you know, you're trying to divide fractions, which I haven't actually done for a couple of years. So I want to show you uh, a much easier way to do this without having to do lots of math and uh, make it easier for you for future projects as well. Uh, for this project, I am working with a straight ruler. I have here a metal ruler with a cork back, just it makes it so it doesn't slip as much. And I'm using a black pen. Now normally I would use a pencil because I want to be able to erase the lines. But for the interest of, of science here, I want you to be able to actually see what I'm doing. So we'll use a black pen this time around. Now the first thing I need to figure out is where do I want to have my, my, my starting line? And I usually, with, when I'm working with artwork, I want to have something that's going to be the foundation of my work. And I usually like to have a little bit more white space on the bottom projects as opposed to the top. Now in this scenario, I'm going to come in and I'm going to just put a line in here about an inch and a half from the bottom. I'm going to make my bottom about an inch and a half and I'll just put a line in there. And let me come over here just a wee bit. Let me make sure I get that lined up. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. And then let me just draw a line between my two dots. And again, sometimes this is where you want to spend a little time just being as precise as you can because it's one of those scenarios that if you do it wrong here, it's not going to do it well anywhere else. Uh, let me redraw my line since my pen decided to, I don't know, do something else while I was, while I was using it here. There we go. All right. So that is a foundational line. And that's going to be very easy for us to use as a, a line that we can measure everything else from. Now, how much distance do I want to put in the left margin and the right margin? And the answer is... It depends. It depends on how many other elements I want to put in here. And it's actually be very challenging for me to come and say, okay, I'm going to put an inch here, I'm going to put an inch here, and then kind of figure out the math in the middle. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to figure out where is the center point of this artwork. And if I want to use that as a demarcation point, it'll be very helpful to figure out where the margins are. And again, I'm going to grab my trusty ruler, and I'm going to just measure across this thing. Like I said, it is 10 inches and 1 8 inches. So that means that if I want to find the center point here, and I do, I'm going to come in here, I'm going to go to 5 and 1 16 right there. I'm going to do the same thing down here, 5 and 1 16 there we go. And now, again, if I divide, just line my lines right up, there we go, let's get those in there, and let's get a center line drawn in here. Now again, with pencil, we'd be erasing these lines in the future, this is for illustrative purposes only. Now one of the things I'm taking into consideration when I put my grids in is that there's probably going to be space between the grids, right? That makes sense. Now, how, how much space do we want to put in there? It is going to be dependent on what we want our artwork to look like. In my scenario, I'm thinking I want a one inch by one inch block, and I want a half inch between each block. So as I grid it out, there's going to be a, a margin of one half inch. And the easy way for me to do that now that I have a center line in place is if I take my ruler, and let me just put it on... Uh, the quarter inch mark for one of these, that I can say, okay, let's do a quarter inch back and a quarter inch forward. And now the distance between these two lines is going to be a half an inch. And I didn't have to do any heavy lifting or, or even uh, anything that looked like math to be, uh, to be honest. Okay, I had to know some numbers. Not so, not so challenging. I know some numbers. And we'll go there. We'll go there. And so now, in this scenario, if I come in here and I... 
connect those lines together, which I will. I can do the same thing over here on this side. Connect those dots together. Now I have the center margin as well as the center point, and this is where things get really easy for me. Again, just using my ruler, if I come in here and say, all right, I want to be able to measure, I'll just start on the three inch mark over here. Say I want to have a one inch square, then I want a half inch margin, then I want a one inch square, then a half inch margin, and then a one inch square. All right, that gives me one, two, three on that side. I can do the same thing over here. Again, just get things lined up. One inch, half an inch, one inch, half an inch, and one inch. Now again, it may be very hard to see with these dots, but one of the things that's happened automatically is that the margin on the left and the margin on the right are identical because when we started with the center line and measured out the same way, we now have them. So instead of for me trying to figure out the math, of going, right, the margin, if I want to do it the way I'm going to do it, is going to have to be just uh, seven eighths of an inch. Yeah, it's just easier to just do it and, and now it's seven eighths of an inch. Of course, what I want to do now down here is be able to put in the same dots, and I'm going to do that, and I'm going to connect the lines for you, and then we'll just work on the other side. Okay, now we have all of our vertical lines in here. I'm going to take my paper and turn it sideways. And now, in order to figure things out, it's very easy because I already have the demarcation I need. I have my bottom line here, which is now merging with the line we had all the way to the, the right-hand side. <laughs> All right, once again, uh, we've got the grid in here. I had a, a slight uh, measurement accident because this is what happens when you try to talk at the same time as uh, you're, you're measuring things out. But once again, it's really all about getting the concept down. Now, I would not use a black pen unless I had a desire to have a permanent grid in here. But what I wanted to share with you is now, as a result of this, we have a place to put our content. When we drop it in, we have the perfect one inch by one inch demarcation that we want. And I could draw in there if I wanted to, or I could take pieces of uh, my other artwork and I can drop them in or use it predominantly as a guide. And that's what this is. This is a grid that will help to guide us. And the overall objective when creating a project like this is that when we're done, we erase all the lines and people will look at this and say, wow, everything is so evenly spaced. I wonder how the artist did that, right? And there you have it, a, uh, a, a really easy way to create a grid if you want to be able to create grid patterned artworks, which I often do, and I uh, hope you find this useful. Anyway, uh, that's all I wanted to share with you today. If you like what you see on this channel, we'd love to have you join us and be part of our community. Please hit that subscribe button down below, and uh, we'll let you know every Friday when we drop a new video. That's all I have for this week. This is Spider. Thanks so much for dropping by. I'll see you next time.